Hey there, students and Donalds, my name is Alice Guy, and welcome to the first episode of Movie vs. Musical. It is officially 20 years ago that the Shrek movie came to theaters, and I am going to celebrate that by comparing the movie to its musical. Because yes, Shrek has a musical, and it's kind of amazing. Shrek the Musical has no right being as good as it is. After all, it's based on a farting ogre who rescues a princess and, well, actually makes us all question fairy tales in general and saying that fairy tales are outdated and perhaps even throwing in some LGBT references and themes. Maybe Shrek was ahead of its time. So let's first talk about the fact that this story of all stories has a musical because <laughs> Is it a little weird to hear Shrek, this green, disgusting ogre with a distaste for everything happy, sing as well as he does in the musical? <laughs> yes. But you could argue it's another way of telling the story's message, meaning not to judge someone until you get to know them. So going into this, I'm kind of assuming that most people who are watching this video have already watched the movie, but maybe you haven't watched the musical, which is a crying shame. But how do you take a movie like Shrek that is an hour and a half long and turn it into a two hour long musical? Well, in my opinion, they did it extremely well. Not only had they changed enough to make it feel fresh and new for those who are way too into Shrek and knows every line by heart, no, I'm not talking about myself, but it stays truthful to the original movie and, in my opinion, actually explores it further. Many people before me have already made the comparison that Shrek is kind of a message about LGBT people and yeah, you can see that in the movie, but it's even more clear in the musical. Theater, without a doubt, is easily a lot of queer people's safe space. It's where we thrive. And yes, I said we. So before anyone gets angry at me using the word queer, hello, I'm here, I'm queer, get used to it, I'm allowed to say it. It's the queer equivalent of Disney World. It's the happiest place on earth, okay? So in the original movie, we start off with Shrek reading a fairy tale out loud, with him ending this little segment by pulling out the paper and going, yeah, good luck with that, and then all star begins. The musical starts off similarly, but not quite. It is still Shrek talking and introducing himself and his world, but it's not through a fairy tale book, it's about what happened to him as a child. So we start off with little Shrek being with his parents and he's seven years old and it's time for him to leave. Which is, first of all, horrible parenting, but that's another thing. Two, it's actually a hint to the book because that's the way the actual story goes. He is sent away because, well, ogre is seven years old is an appropriate age to leave home, apparently. So that's what he does. We see Shrek walking around and all the people who see him get scared of him or grossed out by him. Except for one, Fiona. Yeah, Fiona and Shrek actually meet each other when they're children in the musical. I mean, you might even miss it if you're not paying attention. So Shrek, he finds his little mud of land that he's so happy with, and he gets this amazing music number, which is, in my opinion, the theme song of all introverted people. Keep your feet bright, beautiful world. I'm happy where I am. So that segment is pretty close how it goes in the movie as well. It introduces Shrek, it shows that he's disgusting and that he likes it that way. Here's the first major difference. In the movie, we see the townsfolk go to attack Shrek. This does not happen in the musical. Instead, it shows Shrek leaving his swamp and for the fairy tale creatures to be sent to the swamp. And this is where the message of LGBT people becomes even more apparent because the fairy tale creatures are a designated queer people. This becomes more apparent later with a song called Freak Flag Fly, which, by the way, also a queer song, why has it not been played in a pride parade yet? If it has, show me proof, because it belongs a pride, okay? 
But that's not the first song we hear in the musical or the only song we hear from the fairy tale creatures. It's actually Story of My Life, where all the fairy tale creatures are complaining about how they did not get the happy endings they were supposed to because that's promised to them because, hey, they're fairy tale creatures, that's what they do. We have to wait for it because that is what fairy tale creatures do. We wait for miracles. We wish upon stars. And this is where Shrek comes home to the fairy tale creatures, and this part goes pretty much the same way as the movie, except for two major things. One, we have not met Donkey yet, and two, they hammer in the message of don't judge someone till you've met them a little bit more than in the movie. Look here, oh god, I'm gonna spell it out for you. We don't want us here any more than you do, but you are the only one tough enough to stand up to that no god flim flam a fuck one. Tough enough? You don't even know me. So Shrek goes off to try and fight the Lord Farquaad in Dulog, and that's where we meet the donkey. Hey, how you doing? Who, by the way, I love Eddie Murphy in the original, but musical donkey's extra fun. You gotta let me show you the way, because I am like a GPS with fur. If you kill a man, I'll hide the body. Call me a noble steed. She think I'm a steed. <laughs> Kinda like in the movie, Shrek realizes he can really find his way to do luck on his own, so Donkey shows him the way. And that's when we meet <laughs> Lord Farquaad himself and the other Duloc people. So that's another big change from the movie to the musical. Because it has a longer running time, it kinda tries to dive more into Lord Farquaad's character. And they do that in a few different ways. One, his only joke isn't just his height. It kind of is in the movie. That's the whole point of this guy. He's trying to be intimidating. He's not because he's short. That's it. Eh. In the musical version, he is a lot funnier. Not only does he have a way different personality, like he's not really scary or trying to be intimidating. He just wants the world he believes to be perfect, which means no freaks. No fertile creatures, and trying to create this world with people who have to live up to a standard that he himself can't measure up to. Pun intended. Even the magic mirror is more fleshed out in the musical. Not only is the whole choosing his future queen thing more set up as a dating show than in the original. Just kiss her dead frozen lips and find out what a live wire she is. Come on, give it up for Snow Eyes. Oh, she's in Tupperware. But they also do this thing where the magic mirror has extra features and through that we get to meet Fiona. Not as an adult to begin with, but as a child, a teenager, and then finally an adult, showcasing how long she's been in that goddamn tower, and also that she's starting to. a national treasure and you cannot convince me otherwise. She is hilarious. Her facial expressions are amazing. She pulls off this almost identity confusing personality where she switches between being totally erratic and frustrated and angry and like, oh, I'm just a nice little princess waiting for my knight to rescue me. <laughs> Pink ponies happy scar. Pink ponies happy scar. Oh my god, we're gonna die! So we cut back to Shred and Donkey who have finally arrived at Dulag and we get a song from Lord Farquaad showcasing again that he's just... How do I put this? An annoying little twat. Now look here, half Wait a minute. So Lord Farquaad tells Shrek that if he wants to get his swamp back and get the fairy tale creatures out, he has to go pick up Princess Fiona. And... You know how the movie had a lot of pop culture references? Well, the musical has musical references. And no one's gonna bring me down. Ah, 
So Shrek and Donkey, after a long travel song, finally gets to the castle and, of course, Donkey runs into the dragon. And here is a weird thing. In the original Broadway version, they have one song called Donkey Pot Pie, but in the tour version and I think in the West End version in UK, it's a different song called Forever. And um, how do I put this kindly? Um, Donkey Pot Pie sucks Donkey Dong. Okay, no, to be fair, it's not a bad song, but it's sung by three different voices, which is kind of confusing. We only get part of the dragon because I guess they just really wanted to look big more than anything else. But the other song forever, not only do we get a full dragon, it's not as big as the Broadway version, but it's the whole goddamn dragon. And two, the song forever is just better. Donkey Pot Pie is just kind of basic, like, I'm gonna eat you, oh, you you like me and you're floating with me, then I'm not gonna eat you. That's it. Forever, though, dives into how the dragon feels about being a glorified babysitter and how everyone wants to save the princess who's out of reach while she is here and no one wants to save her, so she's a little bitter. And then Donkey, also in Donkey Pot Pie for that matter, kind of stops and like, hey, I'm not a knight. If you can't see that, get your eyes checked, and I don't like princesses, I like big, big girls, something like that. And <laughs> in the Donkey Pot Pie, it's more like him saying her teeth are pretty, or something like that. And I don't know, I just, I, I cannot think of a single reason why you would prefer Donkey Pot Pie to Forever, because Forever, three-dimensional dragon, Donkey Pot Pie. So after the dragon song, whether it was the good version or the bad version, we see Shrek and Fiona finally meet. It's pretty close to the movie with a few extra jokes and Fiona kind of trying to force this idea she's had her whole life about how this is supposed to go. They get out of the tower, they meet up with Donkey, they get out, Fiona's happy, until, of course, Fiona has to notice that the one who saved her is not her true love, but in fact an ogre who is just, essentially, a delivery boy. So as we all know, after sunset, Fiona becomes an ogre, so therefore she goes to camp for the night and kind of leaves Shrek and Donkey to talk things out. Then comes a song that I think is gorgeous. It's Shrek kind of playing with the idea of who he would be if he hadn't been born an ogre. And it varies from poet to hero to knight to viking, something like that. But then in the middle of the song, it's almost like he realizes that that's just never gonna happen. And he sings about how an ogre is an ogre. You can't really be anything else. You hide and you're alone. And that's just the way it is. Fiona comes in and joins Shrek in this crisscross duet along with Donkey. And then the first act ends. So Fiona starts off the second act with a song called Morning Person, where we get to see those iconic scenes where she sings so high that the bird explodes and she rips off the antlers of a deer, not in the movie, but kind of on par with the bird. So this is where the romance between Shrek and Fiona starts to blossom. She asks about her groom to be, they make short guy jokes, haha, ha, very funny. No, it's not, except donkey falling on the stage is a little funny. This is where the connection between Fiona and Shrek becomes stronger than it is in the movie. Get to hear them complain, so to speak, about their childhood and how their lives have been. And we get to see the contrast, but also the similarities between them, which ultimately leads them to kind of connect with each other. And then we get the fart battle. So, like I said earlier, Fiona is much more of a knockball in this musical. In the movie, she's kind of your run of the mill princess, just sprinkled with some quirky on her and some ogre like traits. It's not bad, but it's not... Eh, she, she becomes more interesting in the later movies. But in the musical, she's a nut job. She tears her fairy tale books apart because she hasn't been rescued yet. She sings and twirls like a ballerina on steroids while they're being chased by the dragon. She tap dances with mice, has a father of the Shrek. And yeah, that's where we are at now. They have a fart off with each other. And then... It stops and they kind of look so in love with each other and the audience and Donkey is just left there feeling what just happened. So end of scene and we cut to Lord Farquaad having a bath. Wait, what was that? 
Okay. Yeah! I didn't say all the jokes in the musical worked. We get to hear Lord Farquaad singing about how his father dumped him in the woods and how he wanted to make a name for himself, come king, basically just to stick it to his dad. And they make it very clear through the song that Lord Farquaad's father is grumpy from Snow White. Oh, daddy. A fairy tale creature. I want you to remember that because it becomes important later. So we cut back to Shrek, Fiona and Donkey. We see that Shrek and Fiona are kind of digging on each other like Donkey says. And Donkey has this weird matrix moment where he's kind of trying to uh, telepathically tell Shrek that he's gotta tell Fiona how he feels. The blind mice show up and... Yeah, that whole thing is a little weird, but... Yeah, no, I don't have an excuse for that. It's not a bad song. But it's one I usually skip when I listen to the soundtrack personally. Spit it out! Are you gonna eat that? Uh-uh, what is wrong with you? So the whole telepathy thing doesn't really work for Donkey, so he just up and tells Shrek, Hey, tell Fiona how you feel. Which Shrek goes off to kind of mouth things over while Donkey goes to talk to Fiona. And while Donkey is talking to Fiona, we find out about the whole curse thing and her being an ogre in the night and how she has to kiss and marry the love of her life to become a princess. But we also get a song from Shrek called When Words Fail. And it's about him trying to figure out how the hell he's gonna tell Fiona that he has feelings for her. Oh man, I'm in trouble. But then the last verse becomes very cute. He basically says, when words fail, she'll understand. Like, she'll understand what he's trying to say anyway. It doesn't matter that he's not saying it romantically or correctly or whatever. She'll understand anyway. And that is so, so sweet and just makes the next part that much more hurtful to look at. Because, of course, Shrek over here is Donkey and Fiona talking about a horrible ugly beast. He thinks they're talking about him. He's hurt and he goes to get Lord Farquaad. When he comes back, Shrek and Fiona, of course, misunderstand each other. Lord Farquaad shows up on a plastic horse. Shrek sings about building up a wall and hardening his heart once again, throwing away Donkey, and we go back to the fairy tale creatures, which, just to remind you, is the best example how this whole musical is just a big old message about tolerance especially towards lgb people and this is the song that is gonna prove it the fairy tale creatures have just been kicked out of the swamp so they are angry they're frustrated they're scared and some of them are saying hey we should stand up to lord farquaad ourselves and then we get a particularly important line for pinocchio Can I be a real boy? If that doesn't ring a bell, don't worry, there are more lines to convince you. In general, the Freak Flag Fly song actually does get me a little bit emotional because it's so clear what they're singing about. It's so clear what message they're trying to convey. It is about LGBT people. There is no doubt that that is the group they're talking about. Sure, you can interpret it about other groups, and I'm not saying that's incorrect, but listen to what Pinocchio says here. I would! I would! Get used to it! I would, I'm good, get used to it. Hmm, when do we have heard that before? I'm here, I'm queer, get used to it. That's what that's referencing to. LGBT! You cannot argue that it's about anything else after that. And therefore, you cannot be a fan of Shrek if you are not a supporter of LGBT. If you're homophobic, transphobic, anything like that, get the fuck away from Shrek because that's the message and you cannot take that from us. So, without getting too emotionally involved, Donkey of course shows up at Shrek's swamp, tells him, hey, you're a jerk, be nice to me, they apologize, they hug it out, blah 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 blah. And then they go to save Fiona from what is inarguably gonna be a walk of shame the next day anyway. Shrek crashes the wedding and... 
I know I said I didn't want to get too passionate about the LGBT thing, but listen to what Lord Farquaad says here. It's rude enough being alive when no one wants you, but... Okay. I cannot speak on behalf of other queer people, but that sentence hits pretty close. I have heard something similar said either to me, about me, or about people like me. And it's a throwaway joke, it's in the movie too, they probably didn't intend for anyone to really think that hard about it. But it's a harsh sentence. And it really hammers the message even more that Lord Farquaad is an annoying twat. And it also makes my argument that this is about LGBT even stronger, so... <laughs> and then Shrek sings this cute little song which has the same melody as the overture and Big Bright Beautiful World in the beginning. The song where he was singing about how happy he was being hated and how he just won his own little piece of the world. And now... He just wants to share it with Fiona. You've never read a book like this, but fairy tales should really be updated. LGBT. <laughs> So Fiona can't go through with the wedding and storms out, whereas the fairy tale creatures storm in, bringing Grumpy, Lord Farquaad's father, with them. And they hammer in the message even more that Lord Farquaad is a freak too. People of Duloc, your leader is a halfling! No. So the sun goes down and Fiona becomes an ogre. Shrek is excited, but fuck what not so much. The dragon comes through the window and I guess lights him on fire? Which I don't know is more or less gruesome than eating him like in the movie. Either way, he's gone. Hip hip hooray. Shrek and Fiona say I love you, they kiss. Fiona is changed, but not really because she keeps being an ogre. Says she's supposed to be beautiful, Shrek says you are beautiful, and then they sing a song about how they don't really live by the rules, this is their story, and we have a very sweet, happy ending on a high note. And then we get the one pop song from the Shrek movie they decided they had to add to the musical. I'm a believer. So my final thoughts on the Shrek musical is... Personally, I like the musical better than the movie. I love the movie, it's a huge part of my childhood, and I love the other movies too, except for one. It's a trilogy, goddammit. I don't know, what do you mean Shrek the Third? Never heard of it, that's not a thing, shut up. That was a huge fucking mistake. Did anyone even like that movie actually? Okay, no. Before I get into a rant about the movie that shall not be named, let me explain why I prefer the musical. It's fair to say that obviously I'm a huge musical fan, so it means the movie automatically doesn't stand much of a chance. But here's a few reasons why I think in general the musical is better and not just because I prefer musicals. 1. The characters are more fleshed out, and that's not just because of the longer running time, it's also because they get to sing songs. That's something they do not get to do in the movie. They have a pop music soundtrack instead, which was fine for the time, it was something a lot of people did. Sideways on YouTube has a brilliant video where he talks about how the pop music in Shrek is actually brilliant. I'll add a link to that in the description below because he can explain this way better than I can. But from a storytelling perspective, I think the musical works better to help us learn more about the characters because they get to sing songs, we get to learn about them, and they get to express themselves through songs, which just makes them more fleshed out, more three-dimensional, and yeah, just stronger characters. Two, I actually think the musical is funnier than the movie. Don't get me wrong, it's not a lot funnier. Sometimes the comedy is a little on the nose. But even with that entire fart and burp battle in the musical, it still has way less toilet humor than the movie, and to no one's surprise, that means I'm more okay with it. And three, perhaps most importantly, the message is stronger. 
Yes, the original movie does say the exact same message, but because the fairy tale creatures are not nearly as focused on, the message is stronger in the musical. And I'm all for messages to children about love and tolerance. And yeah, they really nailed that part, at least to me. I was crying happy tears by the end of this musical, which, to be fair, isn't a huge compliment to the musical since, well, I'm a crier, <laughs> but still, you know what? I'm gonna own it. I was crying happy tears by the end of Shrek, like Shrek, the green ogre made me cry. The musical was doing something right for me anyway. Thank you guys for listening to me ramble on about musicals and movies and just LGBT in general. I hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me if there's any movie versus musical you would like me to talk about next. But until then, let your freak flag fly and never take it down. As a side note, there's a witch in the Shrek musical that has this little spider tattoo on her breast. And that was actually how I got the idea that I wanted.